Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam Wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd On today's program I would like to discuss A very important treatise of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdu Wahhab Rahimahullah ta'ala Entitled The Four Principles Or Qawaid al-Arba'a as with many of the works of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab that stress Islamic monotheism or Tawheed, the reader will find simplicity in style and concise usage of the base text of Islam, meaning the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The four principles is no exception to that rule. And the immense religious benefit contained in this treatise will hopefully help and dispel the doubts that some from amongst the Muslim community have regarding the concept of pure Islamic monotheism, meaning Tawheed. Sheikh Abdul Razak al Badr, Hafidullah Ta'ala, in discussing this important treatise, said, Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Shaykh al Islam, was advising people with immensely important advice clarifying monotheism, which mankind was created to fulfill. And he warned against shirk, the greatest sin and most prohibited things. He wrote various writings clarifying Tawheed, warning against shirk, disapproving it, falsifying it and refuting the doubts of those who proposed it. And the Shaykh was of those who held to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This statement gives us insight into the books of Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, his life, and why he is known for adhering to the methodology of the Salaf. And the simplicity of his treatises bear witness to that. Whoever comprehends this book and its principles will not be deceived in these issues or be misled by the evidences presented by the people of misguidance and falsehood. These are four important principles which no Muslim can do without regarding comprehending Tawheed and Shirk, distinguishing the truth which is Tawheed from falsehood which is Shirk. Imam, Ibn, uh, Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab began by saying in his treatise, he said, he began by saying, I ask Allah the most generous, the Lord of the mighty throne, to protect you in this life as well as the hereafter, to bless you wherever you are, and make you from those who if they are given, they become thankful. And if they are tested, they are patient. And when they sin, they seek forgiveness. For those are three signs of happiness. Al-Allama Ahmed Al-Najmi Rahimahullah Ta'ala commented on the above by saying, whoever is protected by Allah in this life, as well as the hereafter, then they have triumphed and achieved success and attain the highest level. Allah has bestowed upon him paradise and whosoever enters it will live and not die, be healthy and not ill, be youthful and not elderly. From the manners of the Salaf and the best of teachers, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we observe that the Shaykh began with supplication for the readers. This shows his concern, his gentleness, and this type of 
aslub or methodology or means. It is a way that opens the heart of the reader or the one who is listening to what is being conveyed to them. Allah protects his servant in this life as well as in the next by supporting them and giving them guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily Allah is the guide of those who believe to the straight path. And Allah the Almighty also states, Your Lord is sufficient as a guide and supporter. Sheikh Abdul Razak commented by saying, the guider is the one who guides his slaves, shows them, directs them to that which will bring them happiness in their life, as well as in their hereafter. Through his guidance, he directs those he has given authority to obedience to him and his pleasure. And he guides the animals to those things which benefit them and away from those things which cause them harm. The Shaykh mentions three types of guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his creatures. Number one is the general guidance for all of the creation to distinguish what is good and beneficial from that which is harmful. The second type of guidance is clarity and evidence-based as Allah does not punish his slaves without giving them evidence to determine good from evil and faith from disbelief. The third type of guidance the Sheikh mentioned involves a person being successful by accepting guidance. And this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. This is the guidance of tawfiq min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person's heart is open to accepting the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided him or her. And this openness and this acceptance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects you in this life, he makes it easy for you to gain correct knowledge taken from the Quran and the Sunnah and graces you with righteous actions by practicing that knowledge. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to be of those who practice the knowledge that we gain. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects you in the hereafter, then he has kept you away from the hellfire. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whenever Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants good for a person, he grants him understanding of the religion. Understanding of Islam, beneficial knowledge, al nafia is a sign that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves his servant and wants good for him or her because proper sound knowledge assists in doing good deeds and wisdom. Ignorance leads to stagnancy in practice and lack of understanding of religious verdicts and practices and creed. The pious predecessors used to refer to knowledge seekers as seekers of paradise. And another very important benefit that we derive from gaining knowledge. Knowledge is like, as we say in our culture, we call it soul food. That knowledge, it feeds the soul. So when a person gains beneficial Islamic knowledge, which is the true ilm al nafia it is the true beneficial knowledge, that this is feeding their soul. Because a person who does not sing, seek knowledge in any form whatsoever, that they remain and they just say, hey, I'm a Muslim, for example. But they don't read any books, they don't read the Quran, they don't ever ponder upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they never read the stories of the Salaf Saleh and try to understand and benefit themselves, then this person can easily succumb to their desires and to a dead heart. Their heart can easily become covered because they haven't done anything which will defend their heart from disease. And as a true story, I know a person who has been Muslim for many years. And up until recently, until the past two months, this individual living in the land of Tawheed, from what has been, uh, I've been informed of by more than one student of knowledge, that this particular individual said they no longer want to practice Islam. And what I know personally of this individual is that they never fed their soul. They never tried to learn Arabic. 
They never tried to sit in the halaqat al-Qur'an. They never tried to listen to a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, but instead they spent their time on the internet, searching about this and looking into this, and possibly all kind of other activities that we're unaware of. The point being that because they did not seek the knowledge, and more importantly, because they didn't have tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this individual has left Islam. وَعِيَاذَ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And may Allah protect us from this. So soul food, by seeking beneficial knowledge, is incredibly important for the believer. This will help you to stay away from wicked desires and from shubahat, from doubtful issues, doubtful creeds, like the creed of the Rafa the Shia, or the creed of the Jahmiya, or the creed of the Qadariya, or the Khawarij, or Jamaat Takfir wa Hijra, or any of the various groups and sects that have tried to divide the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects you in this life, then you are protected from trials and excessive tribulations and involving yourself in things that do not concern you. And it means you receive the blessings of guidance until you die. And may Allah bless us to be of those who received guidance from Him subhanahu until we die. A person can only have blessings wherever he is if he is sitting with good people and surrounded by righteousness. So this shows us the importance of having good companions. As the Prophet ﷺ illustrated in countless ahadith, the importance of having good companionship, and that the person is on the religion of their companions. And that the Prophet ﷺ said, Men minhum, that whoever resembles a people, then he is from them. So it shows us we should have good people around us and we should try to resemble the believers, try to resemble Ahl Khair, try to resemble the ulama, the scholars of Islam who practice the religion, understand the religion, have hikmah and wisdom regarding the religion. Shaykh Abdul Razak, Hafidhullah Ta'ala mentions that Ibn Al-Qayyim said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, a person can only be blessed wherever he is, if wherever he goes, he leaves benefit with the people around him. True happiness comes from possessing the three characteristics mentioned by the Shaykh. Thankfulness, patience, and forgiveness. Everyone is in search of happiness, some through sin and wickedness, some by involving themselves in worldly issues, and some by doing righteousness. The person who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and is thankful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favors of guidance and sustenance and family is truly successful. So the one who's thankful is truly successful. Min shakirin In addition, the one who seeks forgiveness for his or her sins is at least conscious of his or her shortcomings and feels sorrow and seeks forgiveness rather than possessing a hard heart, which is misguided. The Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta wa khayran khata'ina tawabun That all the children of Adam commit sin, and the best of those who sin are those who repent. The final characteristic is possessing patience during harm and trials. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا عَسَرْ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرْ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالصَّبْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the final ayat there, He says, وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالصَّبْرِ That they call, the people who are the believers, who are the, uh, the successful ones away from the khasirin, that these people are those people who they call to goodness, meaning they propagate the message of Islam. They enjoin the good and forbid the evil. وَتَوَصُلْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَصُلْ بِالصَّبْرِ And they call to patience. So it is upon us as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to call, uh, to be patient. That is a, 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 one of the characteristics of the believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions, Verily Allah is with those who are patient. In Allah ma sabirin. Thankfulness and seeking forgiveness are righteous deeds of worship. 
And patience is a characteristic Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. This shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses the characteristic of love, of muhabba, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah bless us to be of those whom He subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. The Prophet wasallam said, I'm amazed at the affair of the believer. All of his affairs are good. This is not the case of anyone except the believer. If things become easy for him, he is grateful. And this is better for him. And if harm afflicts him, he is patient. And this is better for him. And we ask that Allah blesses us to be of the sabreen, to be of those people who are patient when harm comes to us. We learn from this hadith of the Prophet wasallam that all the affairs of the believer are good. And his or her reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the complete believer is grateful during ease and patient during trials, tests, and afflictions. Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned, he said, I'lam. He said, no, may Allah guide you to obeying him. That Hanifiya is the religion of Ibrahim. It is worshiping Allah alone with sincerity. So here the Shaykh shows us that sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this is a pillar of worship. And that the deen or the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was Hanifiyyah. It was the millah to Tawheed. It was the religion of Tawheed, the religion of Islamic monotheism, the pure monotheism, which will grant us success in this life as well as the hereafter. But this Tawheed that we're talking to, it is built upon ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is built upon worshiping, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity, and we must follow the actions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For example, if we make hajj, hajj is an actual actualization of tawheed and monotheism. We are doing these rituals to please Allah. We are doing these rituals because Allah orders to do them. And we do them in accordance with the sunnah of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what the believer is worshipping based upon. And this is, what the, this is how the believer actualizes tawheed and actualizes Islamic monotheism. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us to be of those, the people of Ahl tawheed the people of monotheism, the people who worship and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And until the next gathering, I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you wherever you may be, grants you sustenance and provisions, and blesses the Muslim ummah wherever they may be, and grants us forgiveness and guidance and tawfiq to accept that guidance. And may Allah bless us all with jannah to fardos and protect us from sectarianism and protect us from any and all forms of evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. يا خاطب الحور الحسان وطالبا لوصالهن بجنة الحيوان أسرع وحوث السير جاهدك إنما مسراك هذا ساعة لزمان